Am I close enough, brother? You're never close enough. Two hours is too far away. 100%. 100%. Imagine if I live next door. <gasps> no. No. Well, no I guess no. I got limits. There's boundaries. Yeah, but I can always look over them. <laughs> <laughs> I can sit in the corner and rock backwards and forwards. <laughs> I'm handy with a camera. <laughs> I've got my own PPE. <laughs> All right, Sean. So G'day. Up. How you going, Shane? All righty. Um, All right. So I had this idea called Shane and Sean Shoot the Shit Show. So I thought we might get together every now and again and just shoot shit about one particular topic. <clears throat> and the other day we were discussing the fact that not a lot of people know the origins of the dozer as a nickname. True. Um, so let's go back to when you first started racing. How did you get involved in BMX? Um, I... My parents built a house in Werribee or Wyndham, as we call it now. And the actual house they built is right next door to the Wyndham BMX track. So I guess it was, I sort of heard about BMX a little bit prior to that. And I actually went to the school, primary school, which is also next door to the uh, Wyndham BMX track. And I was in a class grade five with Nathan Scholes, if you remember Nathan. Yep. And his dad um, was the president of the BMX club there. And it was just, I remember seeing his bike, which was a Malvern Star Supermax Chromo, and just absolutely thought that was the greatest thing ever. Um, he let me have a few rides of it, and that was it. I was absolutely hooked. Um, he had a spare GT Cruiser. So for six months, I got into it, borrowed gear, and raced cr Junior Cruiser back then. And um, got into racing that way. And my parents were kind of a little bit reluctant because they had just bought me a 10 speed racer. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, BMX was kind of off, off, the, off the sort of thing there where it wasn't affordable as, you know, building a new house and trying to get themselves established. So uh, I was racing a Bari bike and then basically just did odd jobs, you know, helped my grandparents, uh, collected Coke bottles, uh, mowed a lot of lawns um, and stuff like that and saved up, I think, $180 and bought myself a PK Ripper out of the trading post, which actually I wish I'd kind of kept because <laughs> it had some pretty good parts, Shimano parts on it. And, yeah, just started racing and uh, just locally, like at Altona and – and all those sort of tracks, Camp Meadows, um, all those sort of tracks around there. Didn't travel too far straight away, but, yes, yeah, slowly, slowly sort of broadened my horizons, made friends with you. So that would have been, what, early 80s when you first started? Yeah, probably, yeah, 81, 82, possibly. So, yeah, so long, long. Been, would have been unusual in that time to actually have a, 10 speed rather than a BMX bike because just seemed, seemed like everyone had a BMX bike around that time. <laughs> yeah, it was, I had a, actually it was funny because I had a choice of either a BMX or a 10 speed. And what happened is when I chose the 10 speed, I didn't live next door to a BMX track. So I'd already made the choice. I got it for Christmas and next thing you know, we were building a house near a BMX track. So it was kind of, it was kind of ironic that after all that, I've made BMX my my life, my sport, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and, yeah, the 10-speed. You haven't been doing it all this time, have you? You stopped to, um, for girls and cars and jo the job and, and then you got back into it. So how long were you out of the sport for? Um, initially, I got out of it for, as you know, I was in the, in the Australian Army, so... In that period, uh, I I didn't race. I tried to, but it just didn't happen. And then I came back in 93, um, and I caught up with uh, Julian Millis, and he was running the S&M team, and he just sort of said, why don't you come back? I can help you out. Um, I'm 
putting um, getting a team together. Would you be interested? And I'm like, yeah, hundred percent. And jumped on the S and M team with uh, uh, Jules and Danny, and and later on Patchy and and obviously Julian's brother Xavier. And um, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun, and then um, I had a bad crash at um, Barwon Eagles, and um, had to have a little bit of surgery on my knee. And the surgeon at the time told me if I was to go back to racing BMX, that I could possibly be walking with a with a with a serious limp and all that sort of stuff by the time I was thirty. So I kind of took that as uh, gospel because you know you trust doctors um and i stopped racing i just i just kind of pulled the pin which was really hard to do and then yeah as you say i sort of you know got a good job at toyota and you yeah, got into cars and and you know had a, had a pretty good long-term relationship and etc cetera, etc cetera. and then yeah just uh got back into it in 2001 and haven't basically stopped since so, so yeah, it's even through that time where you're off the bike, were you thinking about BMX or is it just completely out of the system for a while? Oh, uh, um, I did think about it. And, you know, like I used to go to news agents back when we used to have print media and, you know, flick through the BMX pluses and, uh, you know, BMX action slash go magazine. Um, and yeah, I just still just like to keep track of, what's going on and you know you you know pick up dvds or or vhs's of like road road fools and you know props and stuff like that so there was there was always that interest you know it's it's something i think is part of who i am it's in my dna and i just i just love this the bmx lifestyle the bmx life it, you know it's not a sport it's it's a lifestyle for me and um you know i'm, I'm not going to give it up anytime soon it's uh it's such such a big part of my life uh but yeah i always thought about it and i had a mountain bike um in that that late 90s period because i thought well if i can't race i mean riding's good for you so i thought well maybe if i just ride a mountain bike i should be okay maybe i should have kept the 10 speed racer (laughs) but um (laughs) it was one of those little 24 inch ones too it was tiny (laughs) um it was a tiny little racer and um yeah, I just always thought about it. And then I actually went to one of the DK Nationals, those big DK Nationals at Eastfield. You know, remember catching up with uh, Trevor Weber and Tony Harvey and all those guys. And it was like I'd kind of never left. The, the, the guys just welcomed me back, open arms. Hey, going? What have you been up to? And it was like I'd never left. And you know what? I'm like, I need, I need to be part of this again. I really... I just got goosebumps watching all the top fuelers, all the pros um, coming from all over Australia, you know, back when, you know, Luke Medill and Sean's White and Kamikaze, you know, um, Paul, uh, what's his name? Michael, uh, what was his name? Sorry, Michael uh, Robinson. Yeah, all those guys just, you know, just chasing the money. And um, it was really good and just great atmosphere. And I'm like, yeah, I need to be a part of this. So, uh Got got a bike off Dave Comport at his old shop there at Pedal Inn. Got a Robinson Patriot, which was just an absolute beautiful looking bike. And yeah, here we are. <laughs> Still, so, um, you've been on a few teams. There was Speedline and uh, Profile. Was there anything before that? Um, obviously, I rode for for Big M um, <laughs> back in the back in the day. S and M. Um, with so what, did, says, what did Big M mean for you? Did you get like free chocolate milks and strawberry milks? And... I think there, there was a little bit of, you know, when you used to be able to get those UHT um, Big M's. Yeah. We sort of got a few of that. We got a little bit of that love, you know. Um, Egg Flip <laughs> was one of my favorite flavors. Uh, we got free uniforms um, and we got a lot of exposure being a huge team. It was it was It was a lot of fun. Um, I just remember the colours was was pretty wild. It was pink with cerise and <laughs> white. So um, yeah, but look, you know, back then it was it was just good to be part of a team and to be recognised to be put on a team. And I was as it is now with with profile. I was even humbled back then to be on a team and and part of something. You know, travel around Australia and um, that was good times. And I may have may have not got the results. Um, but I just, I've got so many great memories locked away 
in here and um, that, that and friendships that have lasted over 30 years. And I think that's the real reward from being part of this great sport. Yeah, it's funny, you know, um, I know a lot of people that sort of have been friends with their childhood friends all their lives, but I kind of left them behind personally and all my good closest friends are from BMX racing. Do you find it the same? Oh, 100%, 100%, you know, and and some of these people, you know, you, you include them as your closest best friends and you know they're always going to have your back and they're always up for a bit of banter and you just – you're just on a different wavelength and there's nothing wrong with that wavelength, but I guess, yeah, you just know that they sort of come, you know, they're sort of from the same, same mindset. So, and as you know, we, a lot of us guys all have the same values, you know, family and, and stuff like that and respect. So I guess that's a good thing to be around also, you know, so that, that's what I value. And yeah, just, there's, it, we always having heaps of fun and we're looking after ourselves. We're, Riding bikes is good for you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, for BMX, probably the peak here in Australia would have been the early 80s. But what's what's kind of like the, the peak of your experience? Rather than, you know, when BMX was at its biggest numbers-wise, what era of BMX means the most to you? I think, I, think the, the, I guess, the mid-school era or even like, say, from like 2000, and I guess that whole, it was the changing of the guard. I, I think, you know, the, the bike industry, you know, went through a bit of a tough time, but I think we all stuck with it. And it was that expectation of it being in the Olympics. So that kind of got a lot of people excited and it got the riders excited about, you know, I mean, we talked about that sort of, imagine if it was in the Olympics, that was kind of a funny discussion and, you know, BMX racing was in the X Games and that was, you know, that downhill stuff was just insane. You know, that, that, it was just awesome to watch. It was such a great spectacle. And I think, yeah, for me, it was it was the colour, it was the personalities, you know, there was like, there was good guys and bad guys. You know, there was guys that were, you know, the Kyle Bennett's and all that sort of stuff. And then there was other characters like Kamikaze and, you know, John Purse was a bit of a bad guy, you know sort of putting people over the booms and Chris, Chris Moller and his vet pro days. Yeah. And, and, and even seeing Aussies, you know, you, you know, Warwick and, and obviously Kalen doing so well in America, you know, sort of made you want to watch. And, and obviously Sam just doing Aussies kicking ass in on the biggest stage in the world, America. Um, and it's kind of sad to see that maybe because of the Olympics that, Pros are not chasing the ABA or the USA BMX title as much because they've got, um, you know, they've got to do World Cups or they can't, you know, that's not part of their cycle or whatever, where guys used to, you know, just pack a suitcase, pack their bike and throw their hat in the ring and try and win the the ABA pro title, you know, and it was such a prestigious thing. I, I mean, it still obviously is, but you just don't see guys – gravitating from all over the world to actually do that and i used to love you know sitting there on the weekend and watching the live feed from the grands and just watching that pro shootout that was awesome you know i still do but yeah it's just it's kind of lost a little bit of its luster so um what's your proudest moment in bmx racing um on a personal level uh besides i guess that you know the thing that's pretty important to me and i i, I know you know this from me is I guess watching my daughter race, you know, Mackenzie, you're like, I'm just super proud of, you know, and in being able to ride with, with my daughter, it was, yeah, I'd say that's a pretty proud moment. Um, I guess just, just being able to ride and just, and uh, and just hanging out with my friends and just doing the best I can. And I, you know, like I said, I haven't got, amazing results i don't have a, a wall full of number one plates and big trophies but you know what i've had a blast and i guess well actually one of them you know when we got awarded life life members uh that was a pretty proud moment to be recognized for the amount of time and 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 to be honored with with like with yourself and you know the wallies and simon anderson and trevor weber 
I think guys. Dean, Patch, Dean Patch was there too, wasn't he? Dean Patch. And those guys, Caroline. like we Caroline Savodka. And those people, as we know, we've known them for that long and we consider them as friends still. So I guess, yeah, that was a proud moment also. That list keeps growing for me. I think um, the Slatter boys were there, Brian and Robert. Yep, yep. And, yeah, like I said, we've... It's good to be included in that integral part of our sport in this this state. You know, it's it's very humbling. So yeah, that would that would be another proud moment in in the sport for me. And I guess also being part of you know this great team that you and I and Glenn and Andrew are on profile racing is 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 pr- I'm pretty 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 proud of that also. You, you touched on something earlier that reminds me. You know, BMX means so much to so many different people. Um, it means different things to different people. So some people, you might talk to them and they'll say, oh, my greatest moment was, you know, making the national championships finals. But but you touched on something completely different and it reminds me that um, it just means... Um, sorry, I just got to get this straight in my head. It um, means so much different to so many different people. So what does BMX actually mean for you in, in its core... Yeah, that's that actually is a really interesting question, and I guess it's a it can it's on so many different levels. Mm. You know, I guess you know it, BMX influences me so much. It, it influences the way I talk. It influences the way I dress. It influences you know what I do. You know, like ride or you know I try and ride trails. You know, it influences my my day to day activity. That's just how much it has effect on me. And I just, I guess I just love yeah, No matter what I look at with it, whether it's, you know, watching guys ride street, ride half pipe park, dirt jump. It just gets just, I love it. Like it just brings me joy. Like I just like, you know, and watching riders do stuff. You're like, Oh my gosh, like, did they just do that? You know? And it's even like, say watching Instagram videos or whatever, like, like guys like Corey Nastasio and, and tied loins or whatever, and they're all still riding and killing it. Like, you know, they're in their 40s. So that's inspiring. You know, look, I'm 49, and, you know, I'm sort of still having a crack. So I think it, it keeps me fit, keeps my mind fit, you know, like it's good for your mental health, good for your fitness. So, yeah, it's 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 awesome. It's, it's rad. <laughs> I think you did mention earlier it's more of a lifestyle than anything else. Um, I totally agree. Um, yeah, and look, you, you and I have been, you know, I would consider you one of my best, closest friends. I mean, I know that sounds a bit funny, but yeah, look, you and I have known each other for, for a long time and you and I have a lot of similar views on what the sport means to us. And yes, you know, racing is such a small part. I mean, it's a great part, you know, cause it's, you're testing yourself, you know, it's what you what you get out of it if you know you want to train and be a machine and you know do all that sort of stuff but you can just get out there and have a bit of fun and a bit of a laugh too so if you want to take it serious you can and if you don't want to well you just go out race have a bit of fun and um at the end of the day it's 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 a good day out with mates you know and but the you know the hanging out you know just going to a track on the weekend and just you know pushing each other having a laugh you know doing some jumps or you know hitting up a set of doubles that you hadn't hit before and you get that, oh, my God, I did that. Wow. You know, that's awesome. And you get that positive feedback from your friends. And even though we're all competitors, you know, like I know, you know, I'll say, oh, man, you're looking good in that race, mate. You know, oh, geez, you did that really well. So everybody's very positive. And I find that's really good too. You know, we all try and help each other. Oh, you know, what gear are you running? Oh, you know, on your cruiser, you know, and, and I'm running this. And, and nine times out of ten, people are so willing to help you out. Even though you might be their competitor on the track, everybody's willing to help each other, which I find is really refreshing, especially in this day and age, sadly. So do you have any goals um, for the near and, and, and the future? Um, obviously, we're not going to be racing anytime soon at the moment, but um, do you have goals, uh, things you want to achieve before you finish up with racing completely? One day... I would love to be able to beat you in a race. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty close <laughs> To set the bar a bit higher, mate. 
I, I actually beat you in a runoff one time at Spring Valley. <laughs> Cause you slipped a pedal on the first jump. <laughs> I will never forget that. <laughs> and I'm like, I just beat Shane Jenkins. <laughs> I made the main. <laughs> Maybe it was the B final. I don't know. But anyway, so I guess, you know, just, I guess for me, I just want to keep progressing and just keep progressing um, and having as much fun as I can possibly have with my friends, you know, my teammates, my friends, um, my daughter, because she still rides with me, even though she doesn't race. Um, I guess, and just keep keep healthy, obviously, and as I say, just keep progressing and um, do my best to represent the sponsors and the and the team that I ride for, and just be an all around nice guy. I suppose I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, look, I do like making finals. I, I, I guess at the state titles, it's always a nice buzz to get in the get in the final. That adrenaline rush. Of, wow, I made a final. This is awesome. And and nine times out of ten, I'm just absolutely stoked just to make the final. And whatever happens, happens. I'm I'm happy with the result. So, I mean, you know me. I'm pretty pretty cruisy, pretty chilled. So, I mean, I probably wouldn't mind having a little bit more of a competitive edge. But, ah, look, I'm happy. And that's all that matters. Do you think there's an expiry date on your body to, you know, stop riding BMX? Or do you just see yourself as going on as long as you possibly can? I will keep going until I have to put profile stickers on my wheelchair. <laughs> until <laughs> Til the walls feel, yeah. Look, I, I, I can, you know, touch wood, whatever. I think, you know, I mean, there's no reason, especially in this day and age, uh, we, we, we can look after ourselves a lot better. And I would think that, you know, I mean, I do have a bit of a dad bod, but I mean, I kind of do look after myself. Um, pretty pretty well. I try and eat well and, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, longevity um, is all depending on how much you want to do it. And if we do the right thing, look, I reckon easy, another five, five, six years easy. You I know? think I've been saying the whole five, six years easy since I was 21. Uh. <laughs> 100%. I agree with that 100%. And look, and you and I, look, we're, we're, in, we're, in, the, we're in the twilight of our 40s. <laughs> um, the big five zero, more for you sooner than later. But and and you know, once upon a time, I was kind of you know, y- you would think, you know, coming up to fifty, you would be well and truly done from BMX. But you know, and especially in our age, you know, like there's there's some plenty of fast guys still. Actually, guys that are insanely fast, and they're in their fifties. And you're like, well, all that experience of them, you know, racing for thirty plus years and all that sort of stuff that 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 does come into it so i would like to think that i'm one of those guys so and 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 people are amazed that you know especially people i work with like you still you race bmx still i'm like yeah and then you show them videos or pictures and they go wow you wow you know they're actually impressed you know without big noting myself but it's actually cool to see people you know generally like oh wow you know your age you can actually still do that so the proof's in the pudding, I suppose. One thing I haven't touched on, which I've been meaning to, where did the name Dozer come from? <laughs> the old name Dozer. <laughs> so there was state titles at Frankston. I two th- oh, Look, you and I have kind of had a bit of a conjecture. I think it was 2013. Um, it was the first moto in, I guess it would have been, 40 to 44, and I think it was the first moto into the first corner at Frankston, um, state titles, dirt turn still, and a couple of guys at the front sort of come together and they washed out, and I was probably mid-pack possibly, and there's some great photos of me just basically plowing through the pack, and um, one of my Speedline teammates, Stuart Kelly, Stewie, he he called me the Sebastoza because um, I used to live in a place called Sebastian, so he kind of meshed it together. And then, it, as things go with nicknames, it got shortened to just the Dozer. And I think the year after the state titles, I ended up putting that on the back of my jersey just for a bit of you know shits and giggles, a bit of a laugh. And you know, commentators started calling me that, and people called me that. So look, I think it's kind of just one of those things. I mean, as you know. My nickname for a long time was Iceman. 
and um you know some people even said they didn't even really know my real name so that was kind of <laughs> funny when i was when i was a teenager what is actually your name <laughs> and people used to call my mum Mrs. Ice, you know, like, <laughs> like that's my mum, you know. It takes on a whole new meaning this time around, doesn't it, really? It's, uh, it certainly <laughs> does, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I guess, you know, I'm not going to get Iceman written on the back of my jersey anytime soon. <laughs> I think I'm pretty happy with Collins. But, yeah, it, it's kind of funny that, you know, BMX, you know, everybody gets a kind of a nickname and, you know, like I'm, I'm pretty – pretty happy even that, like you know some people still call me ice man it's kind of cool you know um you know and that's sort of popping up a little the commentators are kind of calling me that which i don't mind it's it's kind of we need characters i think we all need to be who we are and you know bmx kind of what's the name values that i think you know we all have our characters and our nicknames and it's fun it's good i, I think it's you know it's good for characters we need that, I think, you know, like a lot of you, – you look at some racing and all the all the pros sometimes all kind of look the same. They all wear dark gear. Their bikes are dark. But I think colour's coming back, you know, because like in the 2000s, that colour was, you know, and like even in the, the 80s, fluoro. I mean, I love my fluoro. I'll always love fluoro. But, yeah, it's just um, – yeah, it's good to have a bit of a bit of a character and stuff. And hopefully I am one of the characters in our sport, so – that's cool. I know it's um, it's been good to have you in the team van and have a few laughs as we travel <laughs> the countryside. It can be can be quite a boring trip, you know, traveling eight to ten hours at a time. Um, yeah. You know, if everyone's snoozing the whole way through. <laughs> they have been they have been some epic trips for sure in the van. And yeah, look, I guess I've always been a bit of a court jester, and I like to to promote a positive vibe and make people laugh. I get, I get great joy out of being that happy guy and making people laugh. And I probably do do some crazy stuff to, to get a few laughs. I mean, I, and we make some great edits and me running behind the van, pretending that you know, get to the chopper, you know, that sort of thing. And it, it's, I guess that just in, in the world we sometimes live in, I think it, it can be a little bit serious and I, you know, and we all work and we have to pay bills and, just to let off a little bit of steam and, and just have some fun, just some innocent fun. We're not hurting anybody. That That's good. I think it's it's a good positive positive message that, you know, you can still be yourself and have a bit of fun and you don't we don't have to take life so seriously. But, yeah, look, van trips, especially the way home, when we're fatigued and the filters come off, <laughs> you know, we say some crazy stuff and we'll have to, listening uh... to Punk Verge, hey? I'll have to uh, shoot shit about the um, van trips another time, I think. Otherwise, we could talk forever. But um, there was one more thing. Oh, uh, those is dad joke battles. Yes. Um, so you're always talking about having fun. H how much fun are they for you? Like, it seems like you get a few laughs out of it. And you've talked to some pretty um, uh, high-class riders lately just doing dad joke battles. How, what, what's that like for you? Oh, it's, it's, it's really interesting. And yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot of laughs and, and it's funny people the, the couple of people, you know, uh, Lauren especially was a little, not, not that she was reluctant, but she didn't think that she, she's like, I don't really know any dad jokes. It's like kind of, I mean, we, the, the beauty of Google, I suppose, is you can probably Google them, but once they go, Oh yeah. Okay. They, you can see them having a lot of fun, which is, I guess at the end of the day, that's kind of the point. Um, you know, like Adam, uh, Sylvester, like he's been a great friend over a few years and it was a lot of fun and he's, he, you know, he understands our humor and Michael Bias, look, you know, he just, he just smoked me. He just, so yeah, that's, it's, it's a heap of fun. And I, and I guess it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing to do. And I'm, I'm, you know, I've got a few people in the works. I'm, you know, their people are talking to my people and, um, I'm trying to get a few, a few more, a few more up on up on ECI TV, it's it's been a blast, and and I'm I'm stoked to be part of the show. So it's it's been actually even um, heaps of fun for myself. It's a, lot of, it's and, a learning process, isn't it? You sort of learn about yourself as much as you learn about sort of all well, the technical side of it and um, you know, what actually makes people laugh. Because I remember the Hayden Fletcher. Um, <laughs> that, that, that was a bit of a wow. flat line of that one. 
<laughs> yeah, and I, I think, and, and you know, we spoke about it. Like, I probably him and I, too much pre workout. You know, fifty push ups before I push record, all that sort of stuff. You know, it was like we were in the, yeah, we were in the elite elite final for the Australian title. So focused, and but in that in that thing, it's you know, like I've known Hayden ever since he was a little kid, and. You know, he's a, he's a great guy, you know, on and off the track. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for him. And like I said, he's a good mate. So I, that was kind of between him and I anyway, you know, that's kind of how we, we are, you know. Um, I still, he still owes me six beers and I still owe him six beers. But like, yeah, and, and as you say, so I, I definitely probably took the handbrake off a little bit and, and relaxed more. And every time it seems to be, yeah, I, I'm happy with, how I'm evolving with it also. And as you say, it's a, it's a learning process. I mean, not all of us have 157 IQ points. So, <laughs> you know, I'm just a year 10 dropout, you know. <laughs> who, who would you like to do a dad joke battle with? Who's like the number one person you'd like to do it with right now? I would love to, look, cause I, you know, actually Afro Bob, as in Robert DeVilda, I think, because you know he's he's Dutch and the Dutch have such a dry humor, he probably would be really hard to laugh. That would be actually a challenge. But oh, there's there's plenty of you know uh, cool guys. You know, and I, I'm actually you know I wouldn't even mind you know like uh, Tory Norhag or or one of those guys or you know like um if you're out there, Luke Luke Medill, I've been talking to Luke. So yeah, look. Luke would be cool because you know he's he's a bit of an icon in Australia. You know he's done a lot, achieved a lot, still active in the sport. Um, actually, maybe even Gary. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, Gary, <laughs> I think Gary would be actually quite fun. You know what? He'd actually be really cool. I think I'm gonna a dad joke battle inside the red van. Oh, talk about the red van. So, so Gary's locked out of fishing for the next five or six weeks. So he was trying to figure out what he could do to pass his time because, you know, Gary never sits still for five minutes, always doing something. So he rings me on uh, Friday and says, oh, I'm going to work on the van. So he's going to finish off all the lining and, you know, make it all comfortable and plush and, and, and do a lot of the things he's been talking about for ages. If, if there yeah. was anything you could put in the van, what would it be? I would put in a little a little TV. Oh yeah, and well, and better and better. I was thinking more of a spa bath or something personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or even um, oh, look. I, I guess Gary is going to listen to this. Probably better drink holders in the back, because <laughs> you know, like we we spend a lot of time in the back, and I guess um, you know the, he's he started making those wooden little little um shelves are uh, the little things where you could put compartments and you'd put a drink in there and then we'd pull up at the lights and you're like oh i really hope that didn't spill <laughs> <laughs> or you might leave something in there and you're like oh i might have left half a can in there and it's you know so look but we all know gary's really busy and he he does have yeah he's got so many irons and so many fires and you're right he just never stops his brain's just you know I'd hate to actually have a look inside there, but yeah, it's just um, I, I know he'll get it sorted, and it'll be it'll be it'll be super good. But yeah, look, I would never take any of those road trips back. They're just they've been so much fun, even though you get out and your bum doesn't work because it's so numb from sitting on those. Because they're not really designed for long term travel, are they? I mean, you know, they're just token chairs, <laughs> you know. But we all manage, we all sleep, you know, we all we all get it done, you know. And, you know, I've had some great conversations with, you know, like with Paul Knox and learned so much about the industry and, you know, because he, he's, him and Gary have had their finger on the pulse and gone to shows and they know so much history and about products and people have met. So there's never a dull moment. And I guess in a way I've learned so much about BMX and the behind the scenes stuff that, you know, I'm quite lucky to, to have that exposure to those sort of things and, and even yourself you know your stories and and glenn stories and and stuff that we've experienced together i, I guess is another thing that I, i'm i'm blessed i'm actually so humbled to have those experience with you guys it's, it's not surprising but we've talked about 20 minutes longer than what we originally planned um 
<laughs> of course, because it's me. It's me. <laughs> and, and the fact that we're shooting the shit, which we just continue to do over and over every single day. So how about we uh, cut it off there? Um, I think that's pretty good sort of background on who the dozer is and, and your history. And um, people have a bit more information about you as a person. So uh, we'll, we'll find another topic to talk about sometime in the future. I don't want to get too regular just in case... Um, we make promises we can't fulfill. <laughs> How about we catch up again and talk about, I don't know, one of the many things you brought up as potential topics? Yeah, no, that'd be great. I appreciate this. And if anybody's got any questions, just don't don't hesitate to ask. Come up and say hello. I'm always up for a chat. Always happy to give out free stickers. You know, I'm pretty approachable. But, yeah, I, I love all my friends and the people I meet all over Australia. So, yeah, thanks for everybody's friendship and time and um yeah thanks for this shane i appreciate it hopefully we see everyone again soon at the track i know right i'm i'm hanging i'm <laughs> absolutely hanging is, is yeah. the Bedco track still open no it's not no it closed i'm not sure if it's officially but obviously with us being on stage three now it's uh yeah all parks and stuff like that and it's under council so yeah look i i'm i'm lucky i can still go for like road rides on my mountain bike or just put the put the pole up on my cruiser and go for a bit of a ride on the local bike path here which there's plenty i mean i could do sprints but look you know <laughs> i don't know the motivation i mean you know i might even do it for just for something different to do but yeah look that's why yeah we just gotta we just gotta get through this do the right thing and we'll be back 100 percent. we'll be back <laughs> All right, Sean, thanks very much for your time. Let's catch up for another Shane and Sean Shoot the Shit show sometime in the near future. Most definitely. Thanks again, mate. I appreciate it.